All right, so this week we are going to be working on chapter 14, which is the beginning of Excel. All right. Um, Excel is a very useful tool. Um, to me, it is the most powerful calculator that you'll ever need. Um, if, you, if you think you want to do some math equations and kind of keep track of what you've been doing and things like that, um, Excel is an absolutely wonderful option for you. Basically, every cell has its own history. So, you know, I could say, you know, you know, equals four plus three here. And I'm like, oh, the answer to that's seven. And I can be like, okay, equals seven plus, you know, 32. And, oh, the answer to that's 39. Yeah, you just kind of keep going down. So every time you type a new equation in, you just give it its own cell and it allows you to see exactly what you typed before. Um, so I personally love Excel. If I am sitting on a computer and I know I'm going to have a whole bunch of math work that I'm doing, I open Excel. I don't open up a calculator. I don't get a normal calculator. I don't use my phone. There's a whole bunch of different um, equations I'm going to be typing in, and I want to remember what I typed in. I want to see the crazy decimal points or whatever. Excel is my go-to. All right. Um, so Excel is really for like data processing. All right. Word is for making documents to present for you to read. Excel is for you to really process the data that you have. All right. That is really the, the whole point here. All right. Now, inside um, Excel, we have a whole bunch of cells. All right, and what is a cell? Well, a cell is one of these blocks, all right? Um, and each cell has a row, which in this case I'm in row nine, and a column, which in this case I am in column C, all right? So we normally tell them column row. So this would be cell C9, all right? Um, and you can tell which one you're kind of selected by just looking over at the gray section. So you can see how D is gray and nine is gray, all right? So when you click around, it tells you that. Also up here in the top left-hand corner, right above A1, there's a little box, and you hover over that, it's called the name box, all right? And that allows you to you know, see specifically what cells selected, all right? Um, you could also jump to a specific cell. You could be like, I need to go to E7, all right? And boom, it will jump you to E7. Now, I don't know why you'd want to type E7 in here, all right, instead of just clicking on E7. Um, and if you remember specifically which you know, cell you need to go to in your 2000 line document, then I'm impressed. But I would say normally most people are like, all right, I got to scroll down and go find out whatever it is I'm looking for. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so we've got our, our columns across the top and our rows going down the side. Now, every once in a while, you may see a um, column and rows both be numbers. That is, um, I'm going to call it an extra power user type of thing. So not something that you normally do need to worry about. All right. So we've got our name box here. Over here is our formula bar. All right. So this is where you can type formulas in. Um, whenever you type a formula in, it's going to start with an equal sign. <clears throat> All right, I believe a plus sign normally works as well, um, but I just, for, for sake, my, my sanity's sake, I just always use an equals. All right, so I, again, um, I can come back down here and I can do type up here, you know, equals 32 times h, and then enter. And now it gives me my answer of 256. Again, if I make this a plus, it does the same thing, all right, but for my sanity's sake, and look, it even changed it to an equals. So I normally just always use an equal sign whenever I'm doing that. All right, so we've got our formula bar there. Now, right here next to our formula bar, we've got a few options. If we hold a function over this, it's a fu insert function is the fx. We've got the check mark, which is enter, and then we've got the x, which is cancel, all right? Um, so normally if I would be in here and I hit enter, or I'm up here in the formula bar and I hit enter, notice how it moves the cell down one. Well, it's doing that because it assumes that you want to move down to the next cell to start typing things in again, all right? You could also actually use the tab key. And if you notice, tab moves you to the right. So enter moves you down, tab moves you to the right. And the really kind of like convenient thing here is tab moves you to the right, and then when you hit enter, it actually goes down and back to that first cell that you were in, that first column that you were in, sorry, not first cell, all right? So if I was going to type my numbers in here, you know, I could say, you know, one tab, two tab, three tab, four, and if I do enter, notice it puts me right below one, I can now do five, six, seven, eight, enter, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you can kind of see how that allows you to move through data entering really quickly, all right? You don't have to take your hand and use your mouse. You can just, as long as you know what you're doing, you can go through this really quickly, all right? And if you need to go backwards, like you screwed something up, like this was a, a one instead of a 10, if you hold the shift key and do tab, it actually allows you to go backwards, all right? So I can do shift tab, enter, all right? So tab, 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 shift tab, 
All right, and if I actually do shift enter, it moves me up. So very, very easy ways to move around things. So again, if I was trying to enter all this data in here and I didn't have it entered yet, this is just a blank document that my boss says, says, hey, every month you need to fill this out, or in this case, quarter, you know, it's really easy for me just to tab through this and use the enter key and enter my information without having to use the mouse at all. So really easy way to jump around things. All right, now in the bottom corner, all right, um, of a cell when you have it selected. Now there's, there's this little square rectangle here. Not getting any bigger. Anyway, bottom right corner, you can see there's a little square. All right, and if I put my mouse over it, you'll notice that the mouse changes. It goes from this like big plus sign to a little skinny plus sign. All right, that is the drag corner. All right, and this will copy the contents of this to other cells. So notice if I copy this over right now, it just does one, 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 one. It makes them all once. All right. Now, if I highlight over both of these when I do it, now when I copy it, notice how it's counting. Because Excel's like, hey, I see a pattern. All right? If I do all four and I go down, it's just copying straight down. All right? So the dragging system is, to me, a little questionable at best. All right? um, it works really well when you're doing um, formulas. All right? So if I did equals you know, 10 divided by 2, all right, and then I did equals 10 divided by 3. Let's see if it's going to continue that or not. No, nope, it just duplicated them. So again, 10, 2, 10, 3. So in that case, it didn't work. Um, but what I am more meant to, like, what a better example here when I say makes works really well with formulas. So the other crazy thing about Excel is you can reference other cells. So again, if I'm using this like a calculator, I can say, okay, equals 10 divided by 2. All right, I can now say equals this divided by 2. All right, and it's just saying equals B8 divided by 2. So it's saying, hey, column B is row 2. That number is 5. Let's divide that by 2. How many we get 5? So now if I drag this down again, it now changes that B8 to a B9. It allows me to just keep doing that and dragging it, and each time it's going to divide it by 2. All right. So it, the, the dragging that and copying it, to me, works really well when you're using formulas and you're referencing other cells and things like that. Now, sometimes that will get you in trouble, all right? So you do need to be kind of careful about using it. Um, an example they use in a simulation is if you type April, which is a month, and you drag down, notice it increases it by one each month. So now it's telling you what the next months are, all right? So it, it's kind of like a weird copying system. It normally works pretty well as long as you're in the right circumstances, but every once in a while, it's going to act a little funky with what you're doing. So you just need to be kind of careful about how you're using it and when you're copying things and dragging things and things like that. So we just need to be a little bit careful. All right. Now, the one thing I didn't show you yet, so if I did equals, you know, let's do 5 I don't know, times 36. Um, if you do use the checkbox up here next to the formula bar, the enter button, it doesn't change the cell. All right. That is one big difference between enter and this checkbox. Sometimes that may be super useful for you. Probably not, my opinion. I can very easily, you know, type whatever my formula is, do enter and shift enter and move back up and not have to move my mouse to that keyboard, to, you know, to click on something. So it's really up to your choice. All right. Now, you'll notice that some of these things are kind of tight, right? If you notice over here, percent of total trend, all right, or total sales is what this is supposed to say. And it just says trend. That means sales is hidden behind trend, all right? And we can resize these columns and we can resize the rows, all right? So if we click between two columns, you see how my mouse again changes to a little line with arrows pointing which way, which is showing me that it's gonna um, adjust the width. So you can click and you can drag and notice it tells you um, what it is. So. Here you can see that we are at 8.43 and 64 pixels wide. Let's make that 9. All right. Now, you may be going, what is a unit of 9 here? All right. If I remember correctly, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros is what's supposed to fit there. It doesn't let me show. Let me just go back and make this normal text, and I'll talk about that in a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. So nine is supposed to fit, I think, nine zero. So it's a little off to me. All right. And that could be at a specific size or something. But that number nine is, to me, really misleading. All right. In this case, the pixels is probably the better answer for you. You can see we can go up by one pixel increments. All right. So 
Just something to, to be aware of. All right, so we can drag this out. We can make it as big as we want. Oh yeah, we got all this big space here. That may not be what you want. All right, if you double click on this, it will auto size it to be the right size for the text. All right, and you can do this to multiple rows at a time. So if I actually do A through G, and if I just adjust the G column, since I have all those selected, it's actually gonna adjust them all to the exact same size. Where if I double click and auto fit, it will actually make them all fit specific to the text in that column. So a little bit of give and take going on there when it comes to sizing your columns and things like that. So just something to be aware of is really what it comes down to. All right, um, you can also do cells and you can do format up here at the top under the home tab. So home cells and there's a format button and here allows you to do row height or column width. So I can say, hey, column width. And it's like, well, what do you want? And I want this to be my nine nine wide again. All right, notice that's not the pixels, it's the, the number. So again, not super useful in my opinion, but it allow, does allow you to do that. Um, again, there is also that auto fit, auto fit row height, auto fit column width. There we go, boom. It takes us back to where we were just by like double clicking. So that is overall rather handy. All right. Um, now, to go along with this, we also have, and this is, I'm going to call it a new button for us compared to Word, but Word did have this in their tables, all right? Um, we can select multiple cells in one row, or actually multiple cells in multiple columns, like just in a straight line like this is what, how you're normally going to use this. And under Home, Alignment, Merge, and Center, there's a button, I'm sorry, there's a button that says Merge and Center. All right, so if I click on that, notice it made that one giant cell. So instead of having... <coughs> What is that, eight different cells there? We now have one giant cell that is labeled just as A1. If I would try to go to B1, it will take me back to A1 because they're all combined together now. All right, but it makes it all one big cell. It centers the text for you nicely. You can turn off the center. You still want to be left or right or alignment, things like that. But most people normally when you're gonna do this type of thing, you want to be centered. All right, but now you notice how like uh, column one was extra big because we had all the other text in column one. So now if I resize column one to be the size it needs to be, now it shrinks everything back down. So merging and centering, especially like titles and things like that, as, as highly suggested in my opinion for you. All right. Um, if we right click, a little mini toolbar pops up. All right, that's what um, Excel is. Or that's what your simulation is talking about. The mini toolbar. So if you right click on something, you do it. This mini toolbar right here, which allows you to do most of the things that you're going to see up here in the font, and maybe even some of the stuff in the alignment and stuff like that. So it takes. I'm going to say what's the most important from font alignment and number, and kind of shove those all together. Oh, a little bit of clipboard too. I see. All right. So you'll notice that we've got our text size, our text type. We've got our bold and italics. We do have centering options. We do have the, paint, the fill color and the text color. We also have changing the size. Then we get into our number stuff over here. There's our merge and center from our alignment. We've got border stuff. We've got decimals. We want to see more or less. We've got the format painter. So that little toolbar can be super helpful for you. Um, personally, I don't really use it. I just come up here to the top bar when I need to. Um, but, you know, the more you use this, again, it's technically quicker to right click and just move your mouse here than just to click on something and then come all the way up here to the top. All right. Um, I don't use Excel enough that I need to, you know, use this quick toolbar to save me, you know, a second or so every time I'm using it, which is, you know, adds up over time. So just kind of something to, to keep in the back of your mind. All right. Now, going back to formulas. All right. So we have uh, quarter sales, one, two, three, four, and we have it for the north south site, the south site, and the west site, all right? If we wanna know what the total sales are here, all right, we could do equals, and we could type in like B4, it's because we want that specific cell, and notice how it puts this nice blue box around it. I could then do plus, and I could type B5, or I can actually click on B5, all right? And now you can see it's red, if I'm gonna do plus again, I can do west, I can hit enter, all right? and just again show you that blue, red, and kind of purple is what it's showing us, all right? Now I could technically just drag this across to my quarter four, boom, and it's gonna just, you see how it changed the B to C because we changed columns, all right? If we change rows, it changes the row number. If we change columns, it changes the column number. So we could do that, all right? Another option is we can use some more sophisticatedness of Excel. So if I can do, I can type equals, I can type S-U-M for sum, 
And then if I hit the tab button, it selects the one that's highlighted here. So I use my arrow keys. I can go down and be like, I want the GSUM or the SUM SQ or whatever the case is. I just want SUM in this instance. So I can do tab and it automatically says, okay, here's a parenthesis for you. And now I can drag these. And notice how it's C4 colon C6. So it's saying the top left corner is C4, the bottom right corner is C6. All right. And if I do another parenthesis and then enter, notice it gets me actually, well, it would get me the same, same answer if I you know, had that shown there still. If I copy this data here, it'll tell you the same numbers. All right, all is well and good. Now it does have this little green triangle on top left hand corner and it's giving me a warning that it's an inconsistent formula. So I can copy the formula from the left or I could ignore it. All right, um, so we could do it that way. You could come up here to the editing, you can do auto sum. If I just click that, boom, it pops up and says, oh, I think you want this data. All right, and it's trying to be smart again for you. It's saying, okay, you're here, most likely we're summing data above me, and it goes up until it doesn't see numbers anymore, so that's why I didn't select quarter three. And it's saying, is this what you want? And again, I can hit enter, and it will be happy for me. All right, so there's a lot of different ways to get the exact same answer. And there are a lot of different um, functions, all right? So we have, if, like, and these are just the most, like, most recently used functions right here. All right, I can go to all, and you can see this list just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So there are a lot of different functions in here. Um, and again, you can, up here, you can actually search to see what you're trying to do. So a lot of good use going on there. Things like average, we actually drop a little drop down number here. We have some average, count numbers, max number, min number, those types of things. So there is a, a really powerful tool for processing data. Again, if you would say, hey, I want to know who sold the most in quarter one, you could say, okay. We can do that, we can do the max tab, and I can select just the data. I don't the total sales because that would be the max. And you can see that 2000 or 202,000, which is the West store. Um, and then I could actually go even farther with this, and then I could say, you know, um, count this if it's the max, and then it shows me the name. So instead of showing me the number, it shows me what the name was of who sold the most. So you can actually do some really compl complex stuff here. Um, which is absolutely wonderful. And you can pass formulas into formulas. So that's how you start doing these extremely complex things. And the really awesome thing to me is this updates on the fly. So if I automatically make this now a three, boom, look, notice how both of those numbers change instantly. It's like, hey, one of these things change, that affects this formula, that affects this formula, and boom, it shows me that information at the exact instance. So really powerful that we can do this. All right, that's formulas. Um, we do have normal text formatting that we have in Word, so we could say, hey, I want this to be a red text, and I click on red, it makes it red, or I want this to be bigger font, or I want it to be a different font type, or, you know, whatever the case is, all right? So you have basically all the same different controls under the font section that you had um, in Word. We also have styles over here. Now, the styles may look a little funky, all right, for the custom ones at the top, um, but we have some different file, um, styles. So we have themed, all right? So again, if I select this, because this is my chart, select that next one, and I could say, I, I want this to be a 60% theme or 40% or you know whatever the case is, all right? So it does allow you some access of control for themes. We also have some different, we have good, bad, or neutral, all right? So it allows us to have some, uh, like, oh, this is a, a good thing, so we're gonna just make that a good, you know, good color. This is the good one right there, and then, oh, this is the bad quarter. We can mark that with the bad option, all right? Um, and we can also have it automatically do that. That's not stuff we're talking about today, but we'll come back to that one another day. Um, so we do have the normal styles and things, all right? However, this number section right here, this one is what's different. So we do not have the number section in traditional Word, all right? Um, so right now, if we look at the number, this is a general type, all right? And we have options. We have general, we have number, currency, accounting, short date, long date, time, percentage, fraction, scientific, text, and more number formats. So this is currency. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to give it the, the currency one. And I should really, you know, apply this to all of these because they're all currency. All right, so I can come down here and give it currency. Notice how it now puts a dollar sign in the front and puts the dot 32. All right, if I make this negative, let's see what happens. This puts a little negative in front of it. Let's compare that to the accounting one. Now negative means parenthesis, all right? So if any time you see an accounting row parentheses, that means it's a negative number. That may be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you're looking at your data, all right? Um, so these different styles do allow different things. 
So it's just something to be that you need to be aware of is really what it comes down to. Oftentimes, right now we're under general, if I type 56 in here and I click on this again, well, let's put it to currency by default, let's get a new tab and just type some numbers in. I click on that, it still left it as general, all right? Um, earlier you saw me typing a whole bunch of zeros in, right? I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or, you know, and it just lets one zero. I'm like, well, I want all ten zeros to show. Well, I can come down here and I say, no, this is text, and I have to type it out again. All right, but now let's know how I can get all those zeros to show, okay? Um, so there's, again, really powerful capabilities here when you really dive into these things. Um, also, if for some odd reason you wanted more or less, you know, points. So if I did equal 10 divided by 3, 100 divided by 3, that's fine. Notice that it's giving me a whole bunch of 3s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, you know, gives me a whole bunch of them. Well, I can say I only want 2. So you can click right in the number section. I can adjust how many points, data points I have. All right. Do 5 divided by 6. That's a bad choice. That's 2. Equals five by, by seven. There we go. All right. So notice if I add more data points here or less, you know, it went from four two nine to if I make it less four three. All right. So it even rounded for me. So it's again taking that into account. It's knowing oh I should round that up or I should round that down. You know, type of thing. So really a quite powerful tool by having all that there. All right. So that's your number formats. All right. Um, it will have you select different things. Um, so it may say, okay, we want, we don't want all this data um, to have traditional um, currency showing, all right? But what we do want is we want the first row and the last row to have traditional um, currency. So we could do that all at once. So instead of having to do it, you know, selecting this row and then apply currency or accounting and then select this row and apply accounting, all right? We can do them both at the same time. So if you highlight one, then hold control and highlight the other. All right, this is really important. If you do hold control the entire time that you're doing this, notice how it has this other random cell selected. Even if you're already selected and you do this. All right, it may get mad at you. All right, so just be very careful when you're doing that. You wanna select the first range, then hold control, then the second range. Um, in the simulation, it will mark you wrong if you don't hold control if you hold control the entire time, it's going to mark your rug. So just be very careful about that. Select your first range, then hold control, then select your second range. It's a silly thing. I agree. I just want to point that out to you guys because it is, you know, kind of annoying in the long run. All right. Next, um, since Excel is about processing data, as I like to say, um, one of the things we often will use is charts to show that data. All right, so we could highlight this data for Q1 through 4. We can insert, and we can do a, a chart. We're going to do a recommended one. And we're going to scroll down here to, oh, there it is, clustered column. That's my number one. I can hit OK. And boom, you can see how it's got series 1, 2, and 3 selected. It shows me the values. Notice how it groups them, which is nice. All right, so the first one is just under 98. So you can see all of this is quarter one, then we have quarter two, then three, then four. So it automatically tried to do that thing that was smart for us to show us all of this information. All right. Um, which chart you use is really up to your preference. All right. You could say, you know, I don't really want a chart. Uh, maybe I want to do something else. So I could say, oh, let's, let's make it a line chart instead. And now it's showing us that same data, you know, quarter one, two, three, four for all these, and we can see how they went up and down. All right. So which chart you use is really up to you, 100%, all right? Now, there is a lot that we can do here. Like, maybe we don't want to say one, two, three, four. We want to say quarter one, two, three, four, all right? So if we go to the select data button up here at the top, all right, notice how over here it says one, two, three, four. So if I edit this, I can select these four ones, and boom, now it shows me quarter one, two, three, four, all right? Um, and over here it says series one, two, three, four. So if I edit series one, I can click on north, and if I edit this one, I can now say south. If I edit this one, I can now say west. All right. So you can now have it instead of down just here saying series one, two, three, now it's just north, south, west. So again, there is a lot that you can do with this. All right. It is an extremely powerful tool in the long run. Um, you can change colors, you can add axis labels, you can do you know, like 
in this case, it just says chart title right here. So if I double click on this, I can change this to be um, quarterly, quarterly sales report. There we go, boom. It now says quarterly sales report, All right? Um, we can come in here and we can change, uh, hit the plus button. We can add access titles. All right, so it just says access title right now. You can add data labels so you can actually see what they all are. You could add the data table. So at the bottom, it shows you the table along with the graphs. That's kind of nice and convenient. We can add error bars if that's what you want to show you some like, you know, whatever data. Um, we can show trend lines. All right, so we could add a trend line. Do it for all. No, it won't let me do all of them. But anyway, you can kind of see there is a lot going on here. Um, so there's a lot to do. And if you notice in here, I can click on these different sections and I have different boxes showing up. So just something to be, you know, kind of to be kind of careful about when you're doing this. All right. The other thing is for grading purposes, for the auto grading, it's going to tell you to put this upper left-hand corner into a specific cell. All right. So if I said, the grading said, hey, put this left corner in D8, I would do this. All right. Now, whether I do it here or here or here or here or here or here, as long as I am in D8, it should grade this accurately, all right? Now, if you put it too close to the next one, and you're like, I put it in D8, you know, but then you actually look at it, you're like, oh, no, it's D9. It might, probably will mark you wrong, all right? So you want to make sure that you get this somewhere in the D8 or whatever magic cell it tells you to, this upper left-hand corner. All right, so be careful of that one. All right, now, to go along with um, charts, we also have what's called spark lines. So I'm going to highlight my data again for quarter one through four. I'm going to go insert. So we had our chart section, and to the right we have a spark line section. We have lines, columns, win losses. We're just going to go with lines for this instance. All right, and now it's saying, where do you want this data? And I'm going to click and highlight those three. I'm going to say OK. And now it's basically putting a little itty bitty chart actually in the cell. All right. So that is really kind of cool, and as far as I'm concerned, you know. Here we've got this big chart that we can move around, all right, where these are actually built right into the table. You know, it's, it's right in that cell. I can't move these around other than moving the whole column around. So that's the difference from a spark line to a chart. Spark lines are built into a single cell. Charts are um, kind of free floating and allow you to move them around, all right. All right, next we have margins, all right. So, um, on this, just like in Word, if we go to the page layout tab, we have margins. And then it gives you some, some default ones. So 0 0.75, 0 0.7, header 0.3, bottom 0.7, right 0.7, footer 0.3. It you know, tells you all that. Uh, but we can come into custom margins. And this one's going to be kind of important. All right. So here you can see I can give a top, a left, a bottom, a right. You can also give your headers, how much header space and how much footer space you have. But more importantly, I would say, is the center on page option. I don't know why it's not letting me do this. Uh, let's try that again. It's because I have the chart selected, all right? But these horizontally and vertical thing, all right? Now, personally, I don't like vertically centering my, my chart on a, on a piece of paper if I'm printing it, all right? But I do prefer it centered horizontally, all right? Um, so I would highly suggest that, you know, horizontal page on the page, I think that looks a lot better than, you know, like, you have this little itty bitty chart in the top left-hand corner of the page, and to me, it looks a little weird. So I prefer to center things. All right, again, vertically, I don't like it because we read from the top left, and if your charts are not in the top left, it just looks a little funky to me. But that's a personal opinion. All right, so I would suggest um, sitting on page horizontally, but I would use vertical. All right. Now, in here, under page setup, we also have our um, page information. So are we going to be orientation, um, uh, portrait, or landscape? So you can just that. We can change our scaling. We can fit to page one wide by one tall. All right, we can, I'll show you how to do some of this another way. But we also have our header footer. So if you have a custom header that you need, all right, um, we can also do a custom footer. So I do custom footer. Notice it gives me three sections. So you can have the left, the center, or the right of the footer. And then here we have the format text. We've got insert page numbers, page numbers. Um, what's that one? Number of pages, date, time, file path. There's your file name right there. We're going to put that in the left section, file name, boom. Notice it's amber sign square bracket file, square bracket, all right, so I hit okay. Um, and now it shows me that my file name is right there, all right, so 
that's where you're going to do your headers and your footers. You should still be able to do insert and you can do header and footer and it's going to kind of take you the same way that we used to do it in Word. All right. Um, so that is still an option, but you can also do it the other way, which to me is uh, it's the way that they want you to do it. So something to be aware of. All right. Um, also, if you notice when I just did that, the view changed. All right. So right now, um, let's go back to page line for a second. So it showed you margins. Here's orientation. Let's say we're going to do this landscape now instead of a portrait. All right. And if you look very carefully, it's probably pretty hard for you guys to see on my screen. Right here, vertically, there's a little dotted line going through. That's saying this is this, the edge of the page or the print area. So if I change this trend, if I make it back to you know, pretty skinny again, now I've got some extra columns here. All right. So right now, if I come back to my print preview, um, not my print preview, what is this view? The page layout view, you can see that we're all the way to the left, so I can kind of drag this around. So now you can kind of see you know, what your page, if you print it, will look like. All right. Now, if I come back into my margins, you'll notice I am centered horizontally. Am I centered horizontally here? No, it is not centered horizontally. So this is not a perfect print page, you know, print preview, all right? This is just the page layout view, so you can kind of see what's going on, all right? Um, so we have our orientation. We can change our, this, our portrait or landscape, all right? Um, if you do want to see a print preview, you can go to, what do they call this? The backstage view. All right, so if you click on File, this is the backstage view. So this is where your properties are. We did that in the Word. But we can come over here to Print, and now it's going to actually show you your print preview over here on the right. All right, so now you can see that this is actually centered on the page. If I come back and I go ahead and back to my margins and I change that, get rid of that sorrow center horizontal thing, you'll now see that it's all the way to the left. To me, this looks weird having this big white space on the right, not having equal left and right. Top and bottom, again, doesn't bother me left and right does. So I highly suggest that you, um, you use that horizontal spacing and you're going to be required to for at least some of these assignments. All right. Um, so the last thing is the um, fit to page width. All right. So right now we're on one page. If I just make all these a little bit wider, oh, the wrong, wrong column, let's make G. There we go. So now you can see that trend is on the second page. I printed that, that would look really funny. So if I go ahead and do my print preview right now, you can see I've got one page and then I have to scroll and then it puts trend on the next page like that. That is not acceptable to me, all right? Um, so we do have this scale to fit. And do you wanna scale the width or do you wanna scale the height or you could do both, all right? So I like to scale the width to one page. That is my preference. Again, now in the page layout area, you actually do see that, all right? So even though you said, hey, I want to use whatever font times your own size 12, well, now what it just did is it just scaled everything down slightly, in this case, you know, to get one more column on there. All right, so it just said, well, instead of printing at 100%, we're going to print at 98% or 97% or whatever it needs to be to make this one page wide. All right? um, again, that is one of those things that is super useful to when you're printing things. It just looks so much better to have everything on one page uh, even if things are slightly smaller than you want them to be. Now, you can also, again, tweak your, your graphics, right? You know, I made everything extra big, all right? But I could tweak things, you know, I can make these smaller so that I know it will fit. All right, so you could tweak your row sizes or your column sizes to make things fit, or you can let it scale it for you. So I do like, like doing that. All right, scale to fit, orientation, backstage view. All right. Now, down here we have our formulas, right? This one is our B456, this is our sum, our another sum, and another B4, or E456, all right? If you want to view all of the formulas in your document, you can go to the Formulas tab, and there's a button here for Show Formulas. Now, that does, like, resize everything, which I find to be very annoying. Um, I don't know why it has this need to do that. You know, if I double click these to make it everything fit, you can see it squishes it all back down nicely. But when you click show formulas, it resizes things on you. Uh, and when I turn show formulas back off, it does go back to the original view. So it is something to be aware of. I'm guessing they just make things bigger because they expect you to have lots, you know, a level of length to some of these formulas. They don't need to be able to see them all. All right. But anyway, so here you can actually now see the formulas that we typed in. All right. So again, that one can be very useful if you're like, all right, let me see how this magical Excel sheet actually works. All right. Um, now. Hey, where's mine? What do I want? 
There's another one I hate. Oh, maybe I gotta get the chill form those off. Nope. There is a quick analysis option, um, which I think they want you to, you can kind of use that one, um, or maybe if I highlight, there we go. So if I highlight these, these three data points, there's this little icon that pops up. That's the quick analysis right there. All right. And now it's like, hey, you, you want to do some formatting? You want to do some charts? Do some goals? And here's your sum average, whatnot. So instead of me having to, you know, highlight this or, and then go auto sum, you know, I can just click here and I can do totals. And now I can say, yes, I want to sum. And notice how it just pops it up right at the bottom for you. And because this was a quick analysis, it did also do some formatting and things like that for you. So you do need to be kind of careful about that. Right? Um, absolutely. Okay. Next, this is something that is, as far as I'm concerned, super handy. All right. Um, go ahead and insert this up here. We're just going to you know, days and quarter. All right. So I'm going to say, you know, if we have four quarters here, we have 365 days in a year, divide that by four. That gets us 91. We're just going to go 91 days. That's how many days are in a quarter. All right. So I want to know how much they did in sales each day of the quarter. All right. So I can do equal, you know, this, and we're going to divide that by that 91. So B5 divided by B3. You know, all is well and good. Now, the problem is if I drag this down, notice it gives me an error, pound sign value. All right. If I look at my formula, now it's doing the south divided by quarter one instead of divided by 91. All right. I wanted to keep 91. I don't want it to change. All right. So what I can do is I can do um, select the B3 here. And if I hit F4, notice how it puts dollar signs in front of those numbers. All right. That is called an absolute cell reference. So now when I drag this down, notice it gives me a number. That's because B3 didn't change this time. All right. So it's saying, hey, if, you, if this gets copied using that little drag function, the dollar sign means don't change B, and the dollar sign means don't change 3. So it's always going to reference this. So I can now bring these down. Actually, I can do this all at once, right? I can do, oh, uh, well, let me do them all at once. I got to do one row and then a column. But now I can look at all of this and look at all that data for each day for all of these. Now, technically, we're at a quarter of a day short, all right? So we could say 91, 91, 91, and then a quarter 4 will be 92. All right, that way we got our 365 days, all right? But if you notice, this one didn't change, right? It's still showing the same data, all right? So if on my this one, I say, hey, the row or the column can change. If I delete this dollar sign in front of the B. There we go. All right, I delete that dollar sign in front of the B. So now when I drag this down, you'll notice it still says B dollar sign three. But if I drag this over, all right, now it says E and D and C, just like it should. So that dollar sign only applies to the thing that directly follows it, all right? So if you want to do both, which normally I find out when I'm doing my quick, uh, quick mouse, my absolute cell reference, I am referencing, I'm keeping both the row and the column the same. I always want to come back to this one specific cell, all right? However, every once in a while, it's like, no, I actually want the row to stay the same, but I don't want the column to change. So that way you can actually pick that and choose that yourself. All right, and then the last thing that I've got is adding and deleting columns and data and you know, things like that, all right? So if we right click on a column, there's an option for insert and it's gonna insert it to the left. All right, so if I click on A, I can say insert, it inserts to the left. If I click on six, it's gonna insert one above it. So between five and six, we've got an option, all right? You also do have the option up here under home cells and then insert, you have insert cells, sheets, rows, um, columns, those things. So we have rows, columns, we can insert a specific cell. All right, now it says you want to shift the cells down, entire row, you know, what, do you, what are we trying to do here? All right, so if I click here, and I did that insert a single cell, it's saying, what do you want to do? So if I do shift down, it's just going to move the two, that one, and the one right below it, down one cell. All right, so very powerful tools. And then the same thing goes with deleting. We have the delete option. We can say delete row, delete column. So if I delete my row right now, it'll delete row 11. There was no data there, no big deal. Right now I'm on row E. If I hit delete uh, column, notice that we lose that one. All right. So this deleting things, you can also right click on a column and you can delete that way. 
do this, and then I can click delete six. All right, so adding and deleting is overall pretty simple in the long run, right? Um, and I think that's all I've got for today.